Hello students, welcome to e Path Shala. I am Dr. Vasanthi, Professor and Head, Department of Biotechnology, Kamraj College of Engineering and Technology, Viridhanagar, Tamil Nadu. In today's module, we are going to see about the factors affecting enzyme activity. We all know so far that the organic compounds of which the living organisms are made up of are basically carbon based. We have the carbohydrates, lipids, proteins and nucleic acids and we have been trying to understand a lot about enzymes and all enzymes are proteins. Proteins are polypeptides and they are long chain of amino acids. The number, the type and the sequence of amino acid determines the protein shape. So that is true with an enzyme too. What makes each enzyme different? It is the presence of the active site which is very very unique for a particular enzyme and this active site is made up of the amino acid which are particular to a particular enzyme or a protein. Remember all enzymes are proteins but all proteins are not enzymes. Let us once again quickly review the features of enzymes which are very very essential for the activity of an enzyme. Enzymes catalyze only thermodynamically possible reactions. They are not consumed or used or their shape is not changed during the reaction. They don't change the position of equilibrium and direction of the reaction and they usually act by forming a transient complex with the reactant thus stabilizing the transitional state. The enzyme and the substrate combine to form a complex which is called ES and from the enzyme substrate complex there is a transition state which I already spoke about and this transition state then gives rise to the enzyme plus product complex and the enzyme and the product complex then distributes itself to give away the enzyme and the product. Please remember the enzyme is now again available for another set of substrate and the product is already made. So the enzyme eventually recycles and it is already available for another set of substrate. Again there is another set of understanding which we need to have before going about the factors that affect enzyme activity. Reversibility enzyme reactions are reversible they are absolute that is one enzyme acts only on one substrate for example urease decomposes only urea and arginase splits only arginine but of course most of the enzymes are relative to that is one enzyme can act on different substrates which have the same bond type for example pepsin splits different proteins and last but not the least enzymes are stereospecific that is some enzymes can catalyze the transformation of substrates when they are present only in a particular geometrical configuration let us say either the cis form or the transform. Now before we understand the factors that are important for the enzyme activity or the rate of the enzyme activity we need to quickly understand and go through the reaction rates of an enzyme what does it mean and what is the formation of the enzyme substrate complex to know about the activity of the enzyme enzymes increase the reaction rates by decreasing the activation energy and the enzyme substrate interaction and there are two models which have been proposed by scientists for the formation of the enzyme substrate complex one is called the lock and key model and the second one is called induced fit model. Now let us see the lock and key model. In the lock and key model the active site of an enzyme has a very rigid shape. So it is assumed as a lock. To open a lock you need a key and the key is a substrate molecule but the key has to be of a specific shape. So for a particular enzyme 
which is a lock there has to be a specific key which is its substrate and only when the correct key binds to the lock the enzyme substrate complex binds this model is a older model and it does not explain the mechanism of action of most of the enzyme that is why there was another model proposed called the induced fit model in the induced fit model of enzyme action the active site is flexible and not rigid as in the case of lock and key model the shape of the enzyme that is the active site to which the substrate binds both of them adjust each other to a correct shape so that they maximize the fit thereby improving the catalysis this offers a greater range of substrate specificity to the enzyme this model is more consistent with the wide range of enzymes action now let us focus on the factors influencing enzyme activity to list them the factors that influence enzyme activity are enzyme concentration substrate concentration temperature ph salinity activators and inhibitors although salinity and activators will not be discussed in detail they are very important for influencing the rate of the enzyme activity now let us see each factor in detail effect of ph let me take over first the effect of ph ph is the negative logarithmic of hydrogen ion concentration and it decides the acidic or the basic nature of the environment in which the enzyme is exhibiting or acting for catalase which is a liver enzyme the optimum ph is found to be neutral ph that is 7 lowering or raising the ph above the 7 decreases the reaction rate h plus and oh plus ions do not block the enzyme's active site however please do understand they do change the 3d shape of an enzyme thereby changing its active state thereby no longer the lock and key model or the induced fit model will match and enzymes cannot bind to substrate when they collide that is why ph is a very important factor look at this graph for pepsin the optimum ph is very different this kind of a characteristic graph is called a bell shaped graph the peak of the bell is called as the optimum ph and on either side of the bell the enzyme is not in a suitable shape to promote active substrate binding that is why every enzyme has got an optimum ph at which its rate of activity will be at its optimum level what happens at the extremes of ph other than the optimum ph there is a denaturation of the enzyme leading to the distortion in the shape of the enzyme and no longer it is in a perfect fit model for the substrate to come and bind with it and the enzyme to exhibits its reaction kinetic now let us look at the effect of temperature the ideal temperature for the functioning of catalyze is around 40 degrees around close to the human body temperature at lower temperature enzymes and the substrate molecules move very less so fewer collisions can occur and the reaction also tends to be very slow and at higher temperature other than the optimum temperature the 3d shape of the enzyme changes and the active site generally takes on a different shape which we commonly call as denaturation and the substrate cannot fit into the active site anymore the effect of temperature and the reaction rate is described using a bell shaped curve we have an optimum temperature at which the enzyme can exhibit an optimum activity when below this temperature and above this temperature there is alteration in the shape of the enzyme leading to the reduction in the rate of the enzyme activity before we understand the effect of enzyme concentration and substrate concentration on the rate of an enzyme I need to introduce to you a very important terminology called enzyme kinetics. Study of the reaction rate and how it changes in response to an experimental parameter is known as kinetics. The amount of substrate present is one of the important key factor along with the concentration of the enzyme in affecting the rate of the reaction catalyzed by an enzyme and in vitro conditions.
Now let us look at the effect of substrate concentration on reaction velocity. It is understood from this graph that as the substrate concentration keep increasing, there is an increase in the velocity that is rate of the reaction and after a certain concentration of the enzyme, the graph reaches a constant region and this kind of a graph is called a hyperbolic graph. I would like to draw your attention to the position in the graph called the half maximal velocity at which point the concentration of the enzyme will be responsible for half of the maximum velocity of the enzyme. So this point is called the Km value. Km value is of very significance in enzyme kinetics because it denotes the affinity particular substrate has towards a particular enzyme. With this substrate concentration graph, I would also like to explain the effect of enzyme concentration on enzyme reaction rate. Unlike the substrate concentration, as long as the enough substrate is available, the increase of enzyme concentration is directly proportional to the increase in the rate of the enzyme activity. The effect of substrate concentration is better understood by the michaelis menten kinetics. Now let us take an enzyme binding to its substrate giving rise to enzyme substrate complex. The forward reaction, the constant value is taken as K1 and for the reverse reaction it is taken as K-1 and this enzyme substrate complex then gives rise to the enzyme plus the product and the constant velocity is kept as K2. Please understand S is the substrate, E is the enzyme, K1 K-1 and K2 are called the rate constants. The mathematical equation that defines the quantitative relationship between the rate of an enzyme reaction and the substrate concentration is the michaelis menten equation which is given by V0 is equal to V max into substrate concentration by Km plus substrate concentration. V0 is the observed velocity at a given substrate concentration. Km is called as the michaelis menten constant, whereas Km is denoted by K-1 plus K2 by K1 and Vmax is the maximum velocity at the saturating substrate concentration. To understand and to calculate empirically the Km value, instead of the direct plot we always go for a linear representation which is more convenient for determining the Vmax and Km and this equation is obtained by taking the reciprocal of both the sides of the michaelis menten equation 1 by S versus 1 by V0. This is also called as a double reciprocal plot. This is the line weaver berg plot or the double reciprocal plot. This gives us to a theoretical indication to calculate 1 by Vmax, the slope is given by Km by Vmax and minus 1 by Km helps us in calculating the Km of a particular substrate for a given particular enzyme. The next important factor that affects the enzyme rate is the presence of inhibitors. Before talking about the different classes of inhibitors, let us understand what we mean by enzyme inhibition. Any substance that can diminish the velocity of an enzyme catalyzed reaction is called as an inhibitor. This include drugs, antibiotics, poison and antimetabolites. They are useful in understanding the sequence of enzyme catalyzed reactions, metabolic regulations, and studying the mechanism of cell toxicity generally produced by toxicants. Let me make it very very clear that study on enzyme inhibitions form the basis of drug designing. There are two types of enzyme inhibition, reversible inhibitor and irreversible inhibitor. The reversible inhibitors can be further classified into competitive, non-competitive and uncompetitive. 
Now, let us see each type of inhibition in detail. Competitive inhibition. An enzyme usually binds to its substrate, leading to the formation of an enzyme substrate complex, which further degrades to release the product and the enzyme. Now, what does a competitive inhibitor do? It competes with the substrate for the active site. As you see in the figure, the substrate is grey in color, whereas the competitor inhibitor is pink in color. They bind. The competitive inhibitor is analogous in structure to that of the substrate. So it effectively competes with the substrate for the active site. So when the inhibitor binds to the active site, the substrate cannot bind to the active site of the enzyme. So no reaction takes place. The second type of inhibition is called non-competitive inhibition. Let me draw your attention to the drawing here. Here the enzyme has the active site and the substrate which is grey in color can bind to the enzyme. But still the non-competitive inhibitor binds to the enzyme at a different site thereby altering the active site to which the substrate has to bind thereby preventing maximum affinity of the substrate to the active site. The substrate can only partially bind to the active site so there will be definitely a change in the reaction. At times there is no reaction because of the altered structure of the active site. And competitive inhibition, it binds directly to the enzyme substrate complex. It allows the substrate to bind to the enzyme but it goes and binds to the enzyme substrate complex. It cannot bind directly to the free enzyme and this kind of an inhibition cannot be overcome by even increasing the substrate concentration because as and when we keep increasing the substrate concentration the complex is going to be formed and the competitive uncompetitive inhibitor is going to go and bind to the complex reducing both the KM value and the Vmax. Again a quick recap of uncompetitive inhibition process. The enzyme is present the substrate beautifully comes and binds to the active site. The enzyme substrate complex is formed after the formation of the enzyme substrate complex. The inhibitor comes and binds to the enzyme substrate complex preventing the transition phase. Do you remember that we were talking about the transition phase of the enzyme substrate complex which is a very very important step before the formation of the product and the reuse of the enzyme. So this enzyme substrate inhibitor complex is of no use, no further action can be formed, the product is not formed. In this slide, I have tried to consolidate our understanding of competitive, non-competitive and uncompetitive inhibition. The upper panel shows us the direct plots, how the hyperbolic curve changes the when in, in the presence of the substrate and how the hyperbolic curve shifts in the presence of the inhibitor. We have also given the double reciprocal plot that is the line weaver blood plot to show the effect of the presence of the inhibitor affecting the rate of the enzyme activity. In the competitive inhibition there is Vmax remains unchanged. However, the KM of the substrate is increased. That means higher the KM value, lower is the affinity of the substrate. We need to understand because the inhibitor is also competing for the active site of the substrate, the affinity of the substrate towards the enzyme is getting more and more reduced and reduced which is indicated by the KM value, increased KM value. Now let us look at a non-competitive inhibition case. The VM is decreased but the KM remains unchanged. In the presence of the inhibitor, because the inhibitor goes and binds to the enzyme at a different site other than the active site and leading to an alteration of the active site, preventing the substrate in the correct collision and correct engagement with the enzyme's active site, there is a reduction in the rate of the enzyme as is evident from decreased Vmax, but the substrate's affinity keeps unchanged. In an uncompetitive inhibition stage, there is a total chaos. The presence of the inhibitor disturbs the enzyme substrate complex. 
no further action is possible reflecting in both the reduction of the vmax rate of the reaction as well as km value thus in this module we have understood about the various factors that affect the enzyme activity let me consolidate ph temperature substrate concentration enzyme concentration salinity and most importantly inhibitors affect the rate of enzyme activity we need to keep in mind that several factors are responsible for an enzyme to exhibit its optimum activity